What is up ladies and mushroom tips? How you guys doing today? So YouTube being it's weird YouTube self keeps recommending myself my own videos that are like old as shit and randomly a couple of my museum videos came up and I ironically was talking about wanting to get a museum squirt and um, I looked and sure enough a lot of them videos like it's been four plus years since a lot of these museums I've been to and um, that being said I actually am going to set myself up here with two possibly three one of them being a completely new museum I've never been to uh, visits here in the next couple days and uh, today if you guys remembered from I think it was like three plus no no actually this was like four years ago four plus years ago something like that um we went to the norton air force base museum and if you guys remembered me if you guys did watch that video i'll refresh your memory nonetheless but there was uh ufo mysteries which you know i always love shit tied to that kind of stuff you know whether it's real or not it's just fun you know what i'm saying it's just fun to hear and fucking see all that shit well there was like all these ufo conspiracies and i went through that museum and you know this is back i was using gopros for the footage you know i didn't really have no cool focusable cameras well now i got my cool little you know dji camera it's on a gimbal it focuses shoots higher res yada 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 so this we should have a better look at all the objects today and also when i was there i was getting a walkthrough from one of the i guess you know one of the employees there that runs the guy he's an older dude i believe he was a veteran of the place and um when i brought up the ufo stuff he kind of like <laughs> <laughs> like it, you know it was just funny because it adds to the comedy of it but he kind of like swept it under the rug when i mentioned it like it, like nothing like like he would have never like he didn't hear anything about that but you know if if i'm looking that place up and doing research and i'm seeing stuff about it like he had to have heard about it but uh that's one of my other goals today after all these years can i get anything uncovered about the ufo mysteries of a i got it i forgot what it was so long ago if i was smart i would have refreshed my memory here but it turns out this place is only open two days out of the week today randomly being one of them and i'm like that's a sign that's a literal sign i gotta go back and see if there's anything new there new exhibits whatever the fuck it may be so today's just gonna be a more fun uh little you know seeing if they have anything added maybe you can get like a better little walkthrough of everything and uh, like i said i'm gonna ask about them ufo things and see if we can't get any information about that but i'm really excited it's been literally almost six years i think since uh, i did the air force norton air force base i'm sorry uh, march air force base museum video because i remember doing that video with like my dslr at the time and i was stupid and just brought like a fixed lens with no stability control and i used the the dumbest thing i could have done i used the onboard dslr mic and that was like five years ago on like a d3300 so you know that it, it it was as shitty as it gets but i still made the video and i would love to just have like some good audio and uh a way better camera going back through there again today all right so this is fourth and then we're gonna be making a left up here on third aka turd street it was literally an entire different world in this area back in the uh when when it was actually an air force base you know before it got decommissioned all that bullshit and here we go this is the street up one oh yeah i remember that like this big section of uh the Berlin Wall right here too. I'll take the front row shade parking. All right, I'm gonna switch cameras and uh, go see some little history ropes. All right, all right, all right. We're right here at the Norton Air Force Base Museum. I just walked in and took a quick look around. It does look like there's a quite a quite a bit few things extra here from last time i remembered but um nonetheless let's take a quick look at the front i remember i think this yeah see this was all i think added on to last time they were in the process of constructing this i believe these are all the old uh station people from the space if i'm not mistaken what's going on man Hello. How you doing? How you doing, How you man? Doing? You been here before? Yeah, Milo, I spoke with you last time, possibly. It was like four years ago. Oh, yeah. It was a long time ago, yeah. Well, and we, I... got, we got some new stuff. Beautiful, okay. awesome. Okay, uh, you already signed in? Yep. Okay, and did you uh, work here? 
Uh, no, 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 no. Did you hear the, uh, what, they've been to March? Yeah, yeah. I, that's actually, I'm going there tomorrow for an updated video there as well. It's been five years since yeah, I've been there. So that, do you know about the 141? Uh, no, no. Okay. So anyway, uh, you familiar with the uh, program uh, Ghostbusters? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So they called them in and to because they thought that there was there's some stuff going on. Yeah. So they came in and they said, okay, you got the most activity on that 141. Is that one of the aircrafts that sits there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. That's that one is hot. Oh, a okay. Lot, a lot of activity on there. Now, here, the most activity we've got is the terminal. The the terminal that is that that building right here? Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You go to baggage claim downstairs. Baggage claim where they got the conveyor belts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you take a picture. You familiar with orbs? Yeah. <laughs> All over the place. Is that actually like accessible to the public, or no, is that no. okay? Okay. It's accessible once they have an event there. Yeah. Then uh, we had an experience here when we came in, and one of our displays. Yeah. Was on the floor in a way where it kind of doesn't make sense I kind of was sitting now somebody brought it down yeah and laid it on the floor was and it configured in a weird way no, no. just it did this that it was just and then it's you know closed yeah you know. yeah yeah locked yeah. down and all yeah and well that's <laughs> and you know most people here is not gonna try to mess with the museum you know what yeah, I mean yeah. like like this right here you know yeah. but uh, so that, that's that's interesting are you familiar with uh, Chuck Rodriguez? Uh, not quite. No, no, because I think he might. I might have been told about him. I remember somebody telling me a story about a couple of these dudes last time I was here. But I, you could refresh if okay. you want to give your. Uh, he was a Korean War uh, veteran, and familiar with Pork Chop Hill, Hamburger Hill. Oh yeah, I see. He's okay. a Medal of Honor and all. Yeah. Right. Okay. So similar situation. His was the third company to take this hill. When he arrived, he saw the carnage. They had five machine gun nests on top of the hill. And the, the, the troops were told to take the hill. They were getting wiped out. All right? So his was the third company. And when he saw the carnage, he said he got mad. Something just, you know, I don't know, snapped in his brain. And he, he dropped his gear. And he just ran up the right flank. Okay. Now, the uh, Koreans were expecting a whole group of bodies to come up, and they were going to just cut them down. This one guy runs up, and I guess he wasn't noticed. He got up there, took out two net machine gun nests with grenades, came back down and said, give me more grenades, runs back up, takes out the other three. Oh, damn. By himself. So it was five in total, and he took them all out with grenades? Grenades. Single-handedly? Yep, by himself. And he was stationed here? Uh, he lived here. Oh, lived here. Yeah. He's from San Bernardino. San Bernardino. And nice. so San Bernardino... That's awesome. And when he got uh, discharged, and he came back here, they said, the big deal, and Medal of Honor winner, and says, we're going to build you a house. That's cool. Yeah. So then he eventually uh, moved to Texas, and he was a teacher at a university in Texas and then when he passed away they brought his body back and he's buried at the uh, Pioneer Cemetery. And you're familiar with Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman was the safety for the uh, Arizona NFL team Cardinals. So when 9-11 happened mm -hmm. uh, he decided to enlist and give up his NFL career and he was killed by friendly fire. And uh, the Tillmans uh, Jerry and Sue, they live up there in Crestline. Oh. Yeah, so he's a local boy. And this guy is interesting. Uh, ben King. Ben King, never heard. Okay. When he was squadron commander, he would encourage his pilots to train his uh, crew members on how to land your plane, uh, land their plane. Because, he says, if you guys were taken out, if you were, you know, strafed and they took out the pilot and co-pilot, the plane is going to go down. The guys are going to try and bail out as best they can. But, he says, 
if somebody went and took control of the plane, they could land it, and you would have a better chance of survival. Oh. So all these crew members were getting trained on how to fly the plane. And they were then, hey, we can get a pilot's license. We're going to get trained by these uh, pilots. So they're all jazz becoming private pilot, uh, private pilots. And uh, we had uh, one of our docents was in his squadron, okay? And he got the training, right? When he came over to the 141s, are you familiar with the flight simulator? Okay, so you have the flight simulator. After hours, you would go over there, you know, the, the enlisted guys, yeah. you know, not pilots, would go over there and ask, can, can we get on it? He said, sure. So now you're going to get the same training as the pilots on a flight simulator. Yeah. So, so this guy got all this training. Then he was telling us about what happened in Africa. Okay, they're flying in Africa. They uh, they landed some the place. The pilots decided to go to eat, and I don't know what they ordered. They might have ordered lobster in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> they so they got stomach poisoning. Okay, so the food poisoning, and then in flight they were just they couldn't fly anymore. They asked, "Is anybody?" Can fly in this guy. I can fly. What are the enlisted guys <laughs> like? Enlisted, regular yeah, guys? Yeah. Then he took over. He landed in Libya. Okay. And you have Omar. Oh yeah. Okay. So he, when he landed there, he said, "Okay, we're going to give your pilots some IVs, but you can't stay here. The plane's too big a target. They're going to be, you know, trying to hit this big plane. Can you fly it out of here?" He says, "Yeah. Where do you want me to go?" want you to take it to Germany. Okay? So I said, okay. So, on the way to Germany, he's thinking, you know, I'm going to get something. I'm going to get a, a letter of appreciation, an attaboy, a medal, you know, something. I'm going to get get this. So he lands in Germany. This officer comes up to the plane and talks to him and says, this never happened. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> got, got nothing. This is kind of interesting. Uh, this is our newest um, attraction. Oh, okay. Um, this the story behind this is familiar with uh, CIA, Air America. Yeah. Okay. So we had this uh, Merc that was working for him, and when they were closing down in Cambodia, <laughs> he went to their hangar, right? And uh, he saw this uh, prop, and he says, "You know what? That's valuable." <laughs> so he snagged it and brought it home. And where did where was this again? Cambodia. Oh, Air America hangar. Oh, damn. CIA. Okay. So he brought it home, and then he says, "Oh, I'm going to sell it." So he comes over to us and he says, uh, "Hey, how would you guys like to uh, buy a prop?" He said, "Buy a prop." I said, "No." Now, you can donate it to us, and you can get the uh, tax write-off for a contribution. So he says, okay, you guys can have it. So, uh, we don't have the paperwork on it. He just, we think, I, I think, it's off a C-46. I forgot the name of the plane. And it was off a, a C-46. So I got to ask you something that now this is extra intriguing to me and you brought up the ghost stuff. So I figured you'd be able to at least tell me if you've heard of this under my research at this place. This was the first time I came here. I saw some news of a quote unquote UFO station in the hangar here back then. There's a whole documentary about it. What could you tell me about that and anything you might know about that? Cause that that's other stuff that's like interesting, whether, you know, it's for the fun of it or whatever. That's, always interested me and do you have anything that you might be able to share on what you you might okay. know about that so the uh, ufos uh that i know about i wanted to set up a display okay the uh, management was saying well what documentation what proof there is because that's all hearsay yeah I hear. and, and so we didn't it's all yeah word of mouth then one of the uh, ladies says wait a minute somebody 
brought in a cartoon of a UFO incident that they saw. He brought in a cartoon. So now we've got something to show. Like, was this older? The cartoon, was it an older cartoon? He, he, ma- he made it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he made it. When he saw that, when he was in this um, incident of the UFO over the uh, Tippecanoe, we had a gate, or, or entry gate. So the UFO was up above. And so he saw it. Okay. So And he made a cartoon about it. Oh, cool. So I said, we've got something. You know, physical. He said, okay, we can go ahead and set up a UFO and display. So now we got one in there. Oh, and that's awesome. We see? Have, uh, that's five incidents of uh, UFO activity here. That's awesome. See, yeah, and the one I saw, there's a whole documentary on it, and like, it looked like it was filmed by the damn History Channel. You know what I mean? It was like, you could tell it was well made. And the only thing I saw something about, besides the experience of that, there was one quote unquote housed in a hangar. Then that was the whole thing about it. But, but like I said, it was all just like a hearsay thing. Yeah. And that's why I'm just, you know, I like to get as many recounts on that because it's just interesting. You know, it it's is. cool. UFOs are interesting. They're always interesting. And then the, the problem that the government had, they, they were, they did not want to encourage UFO uh, talk talk about it. Yeah, and, rumors, etc. Yeah, so they were trying to put it down as um, uh, just fictional. You know, there's no, no facts. It just made up. Is this uh, yeah, a copy of it or the real that, one? That's the real one. That, that's what he drew uh, after he, that incident. And so we've got five incidents that uh, we've got in our book here. Do you know the date this was dr- drawn? Uh, he's got... Oh, right there, 2013. Okay. So well, that particular incident there was from uh, 1977. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, 1977, they had this uh, program on base where they would have uh, summer jobs for the high school kids. Mm-hmm. So um, his mom brought him on base, and at the gate, uh, <laughs> his mom saw this uh, UFO above the gate. And the uh, security guard at the gate was on his uh, radio uh, calling it in. And so when they approached the gate, the guard told the, gu- told the uh, uh, people to get on as fast as you can. You know, don't, he didn't even check IDs. Just move on, move on. And then uh, when they uh, turned around to look at it again, it was gone. So it was just a short. And obviously, being a, a, an airport, you know, you would think that would be something everyone knows about that's going on, like air traffic and stuff, right? So it was kind of it wasn't that, it was seen never, on air, tra- air traffic it, it, or nothing. No, nobody, no, nobody ever reported it. So, that's yeah, that's that's weird. So uh, anyway, so he, being a ca- cartoonist, he made a cartoon about it, and he was saying uh, what was happening was this alien came here to Norton, and he asked uh, this, somebody can. Can you direct me to the golf course? And so that was a a nice little cartoon. And the big one was back in 68 when uh, we had this uh, UFO. uh, Mainly it was spotted in Redlands. And we had Project Blue Book. Mm -hmm. They came to investigate. So their conclusion was the people that saw this were civilians. They were unreliable. They're not Air Force pilots, not Air Force air traffic controllers. So therefore, what they saw could have been a low-flying airplane. And, and dismissed it as such, yeah. huh? And the other one that was kind of interesting, uh, 82. 82... Uh, my friend Paul Sperry uh, told me about this uh, on swing shift we had a, a UFO hover over the runway so they closed the flight line they closed the airport they closed the base to traffic because of that UFO so, so it was noticed by multiple people then yeah, at that uh-huh. point yeah. and so uh, we called air traffic control and asked them 
do you see what we see out here? They said, yes, but no one will believe us. Okay? After a period, of, and the security police went out there and just set a perimeter. Now, if you remember uh, Mildenhall? Uh, I'm okay. Mildenhall security police went out to the UFO that was in the forest, and they actually touched it. Okay? Our guys didn't do that. Oh, they yeah. just set up a perimeter and didn't, <laughs> didn't get any closer than that. Okay. So, after a while, uh, the base, the runway is closed, and they say, you know, we, we can't have that forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they called up March and said, sent up a couple of fighters to, to chase it. So they came up slow on the east side, and then the UFO moved, and then they, they went on afterburner and, and just chased it away. So after that, security police went out and confiscated all pictures. All right. So that was posted on Facebook. All right. And about that incident. And then uh, this uh, lady, Kathy, says, I heard about it. My roommate in the barracks was the air traffic controller that day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I told uh, Kathy, yeah, I told her what we called the air traffic controller about about it. Mm -hmm. And this other gal, uh, Bridget, uh, posted, Kathy, I was an air traffic controller at Norton during this time frame. I'm curious, who was your roommate? And Kathy tells Bridget, her name was, we called her Dottie or Dorothy Filbert, if I'm spelling her last name correctly. So, the air traffic controllers were told, do not discuss this. So this other air traffic did. And that was a random occurrence of like people's confirming, you know, the know abouts of it, yeah, huh? And yeah. You do not talk about it. So I asked my uh, friend Steve Miklas from Combat Camera about this incident. Are you familiar with Combat Camera? No. They're audiovisual for the base. Oh, okay, okay. They're the ones that take pictures and videos. Okay. All right. I asked him about it. All right. And he said, first, he denied it. You know, rumors, propaganda. And I said, wait a minute. Our friend, Paul, told me about it. And he says, yeah, we've got video. So evidently, the base had video cameras, you know, for surveillance. surveillance. Yeah. And he, he saw the videos. Oh. So that was pretty, pretty interesting. That, that's really interesting, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, we got it. Sounds that's like way more in depth than what I was able to even find on the documentary. So that's that's even cooler yeah. new news right there. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. So, oh, damn, thank you for running me through that. Oh, that's really cool. The GI Joe is that is that an older one, or is that newer? Of and it looks vintage. Mm, um, oh yeah, it says classic collection. Classic, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else new you'd say within the oh, last four years? Yeah, well, we got over here. Have you seen our, oh, yeah. our, our black box? Flight recorder. Do not. Oh, no, no, no. What's what's this one? This is the uh, voice recorder. We got two recorders. We got the voice and we got the data. So this is the one that uh, Radio Shop Communications was responsible for. So. Uh, this was donated to us. Two thousand three. Oh. oh, okay. It's not really that old. Yeah, it came off of uh, one three six on October two thousand three when it was uh, uh, departing to the boneyard. All these like flight compasses right here. Yeah, this is for navigation, oh. and uh, this is new. We've got a uh, uh, sketch of a navigator doing his. Um, sextant uh, reading on the 141 and this is very similar how they do it on boats and ships with a sextant and here we have a hole in the flight deck where he can uh, stick the sextant so he can uh, is that for like bearing for or navigation to get, to get a uh, read the stars and get an angle. So that's what he's using, referencing? Yeah. And this is a, an example of the sextant in World War II. And you look out there, and then you would uh, look at the star and get the 
angle. Well, that's great condition for the age. And that's uh, Mr. Norton himself right there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chuck Yeager, and Chuck Yeager uh, retired here back in 75, and uh, Yeager, man, he, he did a lot in World War II, he became an ace in one day, and when he was shot down, and he was, um, he escaped through the French underground, and when he got back to England, um, the, the common... Uh, occurrence would be he would be sent home and he went to uh, Eisenhower and said I don't want to go home I want to go back to my unit and continue on <laughs> so not too many <laughs> he just dove into that life yeah, at first he, huh yeah he didn't, hey, he didn't want to leave that he respectable to, yeah and, and and for a clarification what would what would be an ace defined as he got uh, five uh, kills in one day that, that's considered an ace. Well, and one is, is it the time the kills within a day or the the, the amount total? The amount total. So the Isaac family they donated their scrapbook. Uh, their great grandfather was in World War One, and their grandfather was in World War Two. And that's a very nice picture. Yeah. And so. Oh sure, yeah. So anyway, the grandfather, he was a bombardier in World War II and uh, he got a lot of pictures of nose art and that picture is like very lively like it really captures the life of the people and uh, let me show oh that's nice yeah I love that art so um, in England when uh, we would land there the English told the Yanks do not park your planes by the fence. Why? Well, this nose art is a little racy, and we don't want the royals, the queen mum, to see this. So, Especially that. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to park our planes inside the base, not, not by the fence. Oh, there's full-blown nip on that one. <laughs> yeah, they went, they went all out. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's I love old pictures like that. The SR program was managed by Detachment Six, which was assigned to here. Oh, so we okay. managed the SR uh, seventy one program. See, did I go over uh, this incident here about the, the PO, is this the POW one? Yeah, yeah. I, t- I told you about the uh, his request from his nurse. Each POW was assigned a nurse. And uh, his nurse asked him, is there anything you want? He says, yes. There's something I want. What do you want? I want a beer. That's this guy. Yep. That's Ernie. So the nurse says, I'll see what I can do. He goes to the doctor. Doctor, Ernie wants a beer. Got a pad? Yeah. (laughs) Wrote this on a pad. He takes it downstairs to the... uh, Uh, clinic and it goes downstairs and hands us to the, uh, the person and looked at it and he says uh, I'm not sure if this is a joke but I got this for you and he looked at it and said no problem he goes in the back and gives him some beer takes it up and gives uh, Ernie his first beer and uh, Ernie had tears in his eyes drinking his first beer and that was post obviously POW experience getting brought back and that was yeah I, I can imagine that for sure that, yeah. that was probably the, probably like liquid gold doom at the time. Uh, people to People International Citizen Ambassador Program. Uh oh, what's this one? Okay, uh, this was created after World War II by Eisenhower. Uh, he wanted people to meet other people from other countries, so to prevent World War Three. So <laughs> this is still going on. So uh, we had this lady uh, Betty. She went over there, and first place uh, she visited was a psychiatric uh, clinic or hospital, and she asked one of the uh, representatives if she could meet one of their patients. And 
lady told her that actually these are not psychiatric patients. They are political prisoners. Okay. So then they go to a hospital and the, uh, the doctor there, he was uh, all excited about his new heart transplant equipment and he wanted to show uh, them that. So she asked him, do you have a problem acquiring hearts? And he said, lady, when a person dies, their body no longer belongs to them. It belongs to the state. We can harvest whatever we need. Ah, okay. And what country is this saying that? This is Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it still like that today, to your knowledge? Well, over your there? dead body belongs yeah. to the, them it's after? The state. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, uh, this is in the time when they, uh, the, uh, the wall was coming down and they had a vendor on a corner selling these cans and on the can it says last breath of communism so it's just a can of air <laughs> oh is that what it is and he was selling them <laughs> that's 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 you can't blame him for that smart idea that's smart <laughs> that's really cool actually yeah yeah oh what's that one okay uh, you see what's going on here you got the fire trucks, and they're spraying water on a 141 doing a low pass. Okay, have you ever seen that? No. Nope. No. Nope. Would you think anybody would allow that? Probably not. No. <laughs> this can only be done at our secret base in Egypt. Really? Yeah. Our secret base in Egypt is all underground. You're not going to see anything above ground. It's all underground. That's cool. Is that is this what that aircraft would be like a model of? A 141, yeah. This is a 141. Okay, so uh, they call this an angel wash. Okay. And usually it's done for a purpose. Last flight, retirement, something. Or they just do it for fun. <laughs> That's really cool, though. Yeah, angel wash. I can imagine the sound of that thing passing that close to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the guy that published this, he had some comments. He says, didn't you sign a non-disclosure? He said, yes, but that was only good for 25 years. So it's up. That's cool. <laughs> so it's like just a ra a moment that was like hidden for the past twenty five years, essentially. But I, I would assume that it's still going on today. I really like the art on these cards too. Well, except this is this is that navigator's uh, stool. Uh, oh, okay. For him to uh, put that sextant up a, up a on top he had to get on a stool and that's a real one from an aircraft right yeah. there uh -huh. yeah so you get on that and then you can open up the little cover and stick us. what would be the thing you're holding right now hmm? what would be the red that's thing a, you're this holding is the engine cover oh okay okay aircraft 200 so when they're parked you would throw that over it yep. keep the dust and debris keep out and... frontline crew trees two buck of the 1960s and so they'd be carrying this thing up to the aircraft to do maintenance and service, huh? Yeah, and uh, I was in uh, avionics, and all we carried was a tool bag. That's all we needed, so small stuff. So you were you were you worked on aircraft here? Yep. Uh -huh. At this base? Yep. Oh, awesome! What years were you in here? I was here to from '72 until it closed. And what year did it close? Uh, 2002. Uh, oh, awesome! Okay. And, and you did uh, aircraft maintenance? Yeah, aircraft maintenance. Damn. Avionics. So you're smart with all that stuff, huh? What kind of planes were you working on? Okay, we had 118s, uh, T, uh, 29s, uh, 30s, uh, and some whatever transients. Go down to uh, Antarctica. 
Oh, okay. Oh, Would that be what the hat you're wearing? Yeah. I, I noticed that. Yeah, so that's me there. You know, Myrtle. Oh, that's cool. How is Antarctica? That's got to be a whole... Do- Does it feel like an alien world there? Well, that crazy uh, wind blowing that uh, snow is like needles hitting your face. Is it just so like, like is is it just a whole different vibe in terms of like just that nothing is there? Or how is, how did it feel to you being there for the first time? Yeah, Cause that's it, like not everybody can say they've been to Antarctica. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had to make sure you had a heaters for the uh, aircraft because uh, all the aircraft components were going to be fr- froze, and we had to provide they, they give us heaters so we could get the engine started, the generator started. Dang. So we had all these heaters. <laughs> <laughs> and always making sure they're tip top magoo in terms of running, huh? Yeah. yeah. The WAFs, the females, when they came um, on base, mm-hmm. they everybody was how we started. The base started in area two because it was high ground, it was dry. Uh, this side of the base was kind of wet because, uh, and we had a uh, a creek going by, and so this developed later. So the first part developed with Area 2. And when we had the WAFs, the uh, WAFs were uh, housed in their own barracks. And then we had a sign out there in front, no men allowed uh, after 1,700 hours or something. And so then they were saying, you know what? Should we allow the females to eat with the guys? Oh, no. No, no, no. We can't have that. So they even had their own chaha. No men. <laughs> and that was in the 50s, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so so eventually, after Area 2, then they developed this side of the base, and the same thing. They came in, they had their own barracks. But they could eat with us, the, the guys. Oh, and then uh, the other thing that was kind of interesting is the... Uh, so at, then, at that time, they wanted to keep them... Oh, we got to keep them separated. But the clubs, uh, they had the... Airmen's Club, the NCO Club, the Officers Club. The uh, NCO Club says, how can we get them into the club? They're not NCOs. Oh, we'll give them all courtesy cards. <laughs> and that was like a, just a pass? Pass! Yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah you, you, guys, you guys can come into the club, no problem. <laughs> That's really cool. That's a cool little inside story for that. Yeah. <laughs> Something you wouldn't even expect. Yeah, so, so then they came uh, over here. They had their own barracks still. And eventually, after so many years, they said, you know what? It's too many of them. Let's go ahead and give them to their squadrons. Right? So they separated the gals, and each squadron received their own females. And what they had to do was, in their barracks, they had to assign a level females only. So in each barracks, they had one level. This, this is for the females. But back in those days, it was funny. Oh, yeah. They had their, their own chaha. Oh, no, we can't have <laughs> eating with those guys. <laughs> what could happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a weird way of looking at times back then, huh? <laughs> but, but the NCO club said, oh, we want them at the club. <laughs> All right, well, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for everything today, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day, okay? Yeah. Okay. You take care. All right, I'm going to grab some of these merch here. That ended up being way cooler than I thought it'd be. I got a, it says from the Railroad Museum, I got a Norton hat, and I got me a, a Norton front and back logoed shirt. How cool. I don't know why, but I always love getting me little trinkets at museums when I go. That ended up being a thousand times cooler than I thought it'd be. I'm over here thinking that we're not going to see nothing on the uh, UFO shit. And this dude's got a whole literal thing about UFOs. Wow, so that whole story about a UFO actually being like not only over the runway, but over the fucking gate, the security gate on Tippecanoe. I had no idea about that. So that's even more stories in history that I that I learned. Yeah, I think this was the old church for the base too back in the day. I did see some old footage on this place. And this old water tower that's right there, that was there back in the day as well. And today this is just San Bernardino International Airport and I believe it's home to the, fi- the uh, air fire operations. So like the water tankers and shit, I think they're all housed and shit here. And then we just got some info 
that 141, there's a 141 that's at the uh, March that's a very haunted aircraft. So, yo, I am stoked. I'm stoked for the next little adventure. But hey, that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you guys for watching. All links will be down below if you're going to support me in any way, shape, or form. Get one of my shirts, keychains, stickers, etc. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the out of that like button you guys have a, a real good day i'll see you guys later